Well, the good news is we got it working. You're not gonna believe what the problem was. Well, we had a fantastic break yesterday and got to spend some time with friends that have been very, very good people to us, which we appreciate. Hope you guys got to do something similar. This morning, I noticed it's not raining. <laughs> that was my observation. We have had over three inches of rain in the past week. So every time we get a wave, it doesn't just sprinkle, it just dumps and dumps. I wanted to share and document a little bit my journey into backhoe maintenance. The things that's been really um, accumulating on me is maintenance. Everything we have needs maintenance right now because of the neglect of getting ready for the workshop and building the house. The backhoe, as you guys know from every video, <laughs> has been progressively becoming more and more uh, frustrating because of things that are going wrong. I purchased a full service manual like the guys at the dealership would have. Um, I got this off of eBay and I paid about 150 bucks, I think. It's like 1,700 pages or something. I've been reading this morning in the electrical section trying to understand how the gauge cluster works and how the alternator is wired. This manual is really cool. Like it's got full fold out diagrams and everything. So this morning what I'm going to try to do is figure out why our alternator is not charging even though the engine is running. What we've been doing to get the alternator to work is jumping from the armature I believe is what A stands for, to the B battery terminal. It looks like we need to chase down a wire that goes to a pin in a connector and check that for, for continuity. I'll be brutally honest here. I'm not a mechanic. I, am, I can do stuff and I'm not afraid to try, but I have not spent my entire life turning wrenches. And I understand the basic principles of engines and electrical systems and stuff. So that makes me feel less intimidated about trying this, but I have not spent any time with this backhoe. So as soon as I start pulling covers off and things, it's gonna be a big discovery process. According to the manual, the wire that we're trying to chase down the connection on is this wire. For whatever reason, when we jumper across the, to the battery terminal, it kicks the alternator on and we suddenly get voltage. We should have 12 volts, however, I believe, at this wire. And that's not something I'm certain we have. Nothing. I think that just goes to the gauge, the tachometer and the uh, voltage indicator light. take long before this project is derailed. Somehow it looks like every single screw in this entire gauge cluster is missing, except for the one that's stripped out, <laughs> which makes sense, right? I guess I will have to go on a witch hunt because I don't have the tool that I need to remove a stripped screw. Extractor kit. Would you look at that? Way to go, Dad. The first thing we need to do to this screw is we need to drill a small pilot hole. Ah. 
So it looks like that's already a little too large. Let's just kind of test fit this one. Oh, that one will work. That'll work really good. Let's try it. That's in there pretty good. We just popped the head off of this one, and that's because I over drilled. Let's see if this will come off though. Well, at least this comes out. This came out earlier, and there's our first yellow jacket's nest. Oh, there's another hornet's nest, or another yellow jacket nest right here. is we got it working so now when we fire up the backhoe we've got both tachometer and charge and <laughs> you're not gonna believe what the problem was without the service manual I never would have figured this out the reason that we were able to jumper from the battery terminal, it turns out we're jumpering from here to here, not the other way around. So we're taking current from the battery and we're exciting the alternator. What we're doing is we're introducing voltage to the alternator so that the uh, regulator kicks on and begins producing voltage. And as long as you don't turn the backhoe off, it'll continue to charge which is exactly what was happening. This tiny little wire that we were jumpering to gets its voltage from, are you ready for this? The idiot light. <laughs> the idiot light has to be working on the instrument cluster or the alternator does not get 12 volts, which excites it and turns it on, not the alternator, but the regulator, so that it begins letting current flow to the battery. The idiot light was not working. When we turn the key on, we should get an alternator idiot light. There is current going to the tachometer and the voltmeter. They're both getting electricity, so they're on, but they're not getting any signal from the alternator because the alternator is not kicking on. So earlier, we tested this wire at the alternator for 12 volts. And where that 12 volts originates from is the idiot light. I'm gonna jump from here to ground and check for voltage. Well, it's not much, but then again, I don't really have a very good ground either. This is a better ground. We're only getting one volt at that wire, which means the connection on that wire is not very good. I believe there should be 12 volts at that wire. I have a hunch that one volt is enough to excite the alternator so that it will charge, but that's probably not a good way to leave the system. With the service manual, I was able to determine which wire on this harness, and that wire is the one that goes to that terminal that we were just checking for voltage. And then I was able to trace it on this circuit board and find where it goes. And there was no bulb in that, in that socket. So this bulb that gives us the alternator idiot light actually produces the current that the alternator needs to work. Well, the good news is we've got the problem solved. So I think I need to spend some more time cleaning this up, trying to get that voltage up on the alternator. I need to do a little more reading too. It may actually only be a very low voltage. For some reason I was thinking it's 12 volts. After doing a little bit of research, I found some of the diagnostic stuff for the 
instrument cluster. So this doesn't really have anything to do with diagnosing the alternator, but has to do with um, kind of sorting out the gauge cluster or the instrument cluster. It says check the circuit between the connector and the alternator. And then it says uh, check terminal T4 in the connector to ground. We should get 12 volts and I'm guessing that's with the key on. Oh yeah, turn the key switch and driving lamp switch to on. This diagram is super helpful. So we need to make sure that there's continuity between T4 and T5 so that the power that's coming to this light then goes through that bulb and that's what feeds this yellow and blue wire that excites the alternator. I'm very thankful to my father for despite all of my cussing and screaming as a kid, teaching me a lot of this stuff. I don't claim to know everything, of course, but it's helpful to have basic knowledge of electronics and how to basically use a multimeter. If we took this to a shop or paid a mechanic to come out here, we're probably looking at a minimum 150 to $200, you know, to diagnose what is currently proving to be a very simple problem. Just wanna check for continuity. What that means is if we jumper from this wire to this wire, we should get a circuit. There's definitely a circuit. So if I jumper here, no continuity. Do the same check over here in case there were some issue with the circuit board. There is a circuit that is being created there. This light bulb that I've put in here was not here. This light bulb was over here. So what happens is we open this circuit up and now there's no continuity. So if I check between T4 and T5 now, there's no circuit. So this power that's coming to the gauge cluster and then is getting fed into this little copper wire was not making it from here to here and back down this little copper wire from there down to the alternator. I'm going to put this light bulb back in here. This is the alternator idiot light or warning lamp. Now if we go back and check T4 and T5 for continuity, there you go. Also going to have to do some searching maybe on eBay or find a supplier and get the rest of these um, bulb mounts. I did not think that this problem would be that simple. I take a little time, get these screws backed out of here, hopefully, if I can find a small enough drill bit. And then uh, I might head off to the hardware store, get some new screws, and try to get this whole thing put back together. That was the only goal for today, was just to get the backhoe charging. I still really want to get, I might even play with this just a little bit, depending on how much daylight I have today. Check these uh, working lights for voltage. Overall, most, the majority of our work lights don't work, and with winter around the corner, we're gonna probably spend a lot of time running the backhoe in the dark, either plowing the driveway or working on other things.